Well, ma'am, thank you very much. First of all, because you are here in Mexico. Thank Pleased you to be here. And this in this uh, seminar. Um, first of all, uh, what, what is what are the, the 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 complexity of the corruption problem in our societies? Yeah. Well, you know there are many aspects that complicate, but one of them is the degree of sophistication of those who try to corrupt people, mm -hmm. of those who are corrupted, of the facilitators of corruption. That's one aspect. They're, you know, they're well paid, they can go and get the best people. The second area is that uh, what you also see today with globalization, with uh, internet, which has many positive aspects, mm -hmm. but it also means that you can hide money that you have stolen very quickly. Mm -hmm. and, and it means that then it, it is very hard uh, to find that money because it changes name, it becomes numbered companies, yeah, and it can happen it. within a few minutes. Mm -hmm. you know. um, and the same thing very often, now people invest as we're putting more pressure to close fiscal havens, you know, for mm -hmm. fiscal havens to not be secret anymore. Mm -hmm. Then the corrupt look for other places to put their money. So very often they will put it in equity in subsidiaries of large corporations, uh, in subsidiaries that are sometimes in secret financial sector uh, countries. So you, you have you know, all of this that makes it much more difficult uh, to deal. And of course, you also have very often, because you have the laws in most of our countries, mm -hmm. you have the regulations, you have the institutions. So the next aspect, is to make sure that these are respected, that these are enforced. So very often people will say, well, we have the laws, so what can we do now? And so it becomes so important for the government entities to make sure that, they, that these laws are enforced, that uh, you know, the public sector is not corrupt, is honest, is impartial, is transparent. And I think increasingly we see uh, many governments around the world um, publishing much more uh, their revenues within, on internet, mm -hmm. uh, publishing what they pay every day, their disbursements. Brazil, for example, uh, does mm -hmm. that on a daily basis. By 12 o'clock, midnight, all that has been paid by the different departments nationally, mm -hmm. uh, all that's been received has to be on the web. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, open to everyone. Yes, mm -hmm. open to everyone, okay? And so, these are some of the examples, and of course, different countries are doing different things in this respect. But these are this is part of the complexity. Right, ma'am. Uh, when we are talking about uh, when we talk about uh, corruption, are we talking uh, about always money, just money? No, no. Money is important because so much money has been stolen by corrupt leaders around the world um, and diverted f instead of being used for the people for the programs that are needed. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one aspect. But there's also clientelism, you know, in the sense that um, pr giving special privileges to members of families, hiring those that have paid to my campaign if I'm a minister in a government. Um, uh, so, you know, the special privileges, uh, and there could be many of those, uh, exchanges of favors, okay? Uh, that is also corruption. At, you know, which, yes, mm -hmm. which can really lead to much weaker, for example, construction, mm -hmm. which can kill people. Uh, and, you know, if I'm a, an inspector, a construction inspector, and I go and uh, inspect this site which is being constructed. Yeah, the construction. Itself. Right, mm -hmm. but the, the owner, um, says that you know the, he, he develops a relationship with me, a friendly relationship, and then he says, well, I have this big condo in Italy, mm -hmm. and I want you and your family to go and spend two or three weeks there next Enjoy. summer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these kinds of exchanges of favors sometimes will lead that inspector to look the other way. Exactly. Although there might be something very wrong with the construction that can be very damaging to people later. Yeah. Speaking about enforcement, uh, there are so many problems in our societies 
to make the the law to apply the law. I mean, the, the, to enforce the law. Yeah. Well. Or the regulations. Of course, but you know, if we're just talking about about laws, when you have a judiciary starting with the justice system, mm -hmm. um, which is independent, which is highly professional, um, which is transparent in their decision, um, which is properly resourced so that a case is not in front of them forever, mm -hmm. where very often the evidence disappears if it takes too long, then I think the chances are positive that this should be a better system. But you need judges that are well prepared, highly professional, that do not depend on the government for remaining a judge. An independent judge. Yes, mm -hmm. totally independent. And in some countries, they've developed a judicial commission, uh, which is not appointed by the government, but which is appointed, for example, the, the, the bar mm -hmm. of, the, the, of the law, um, elects two of its members to the commission. Mm -hmm. Maybe the academy, the, um, that is the, um, the faculties of law in the universities in the country may, may uh, elect two others. Maybe the parliament will elect two. And, so, and then that judicial council becomes very powerful mm -hmm. uh, in ensuring that those that enter and become judges uh, have all the right qualifications to do so. That's one aspect. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you have to, to uh, the government on its side has to be respectful of the judiciary. They've got to have strong prosecutors that are also very professional and, um, and have their own independence when they're preparing a case to put in front of the judges. Uh, the same thing with the, with the police. Um, if the police don't have the resources or the capacity to do a good investigation on a particular case of corruption, then it will never appear in front of the judge. Mm -hmm. And if it does, maybe it is so badly done that the evidence is thrown out. So it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's this, the whole system is important to work well here. Uh, last question, uh, talking about education and children, what's important in terms of the corruption to teach uh, young people, uh, students or, or children about corruption and that, uh, I mean, to, in order to learn how to say that is wrong, that is right? You know, I've seen some very interesting projects that some of our chapters have been involved in where um, they brought together uh, psychopedagogues, artists, um, teachers, to prepare a training program starting like in grade three. Mm -hmm. one, one hour a week, and now they've done it for grade six and so on, and they've convinced the government, this is in Chile, uh, they've convinced the government of making it totally available. They tried it in nine schools for a few years, and I saw what was, and these were, it, it seemed like a game, but it was a very serious game, where the children were given an issue, and they had to decide whether it was right or wrong. And they would work at it, and they would debate it, you know, they were just little groups of four or five or around the whole classroom. And then, when they arrived at their, then they had to decide what were they gonna do about that. And it was fascinating to see this. So um, I think the, the educational system is extremely powerful in terms of getting young people very early, not just by telling them this is right, this is wrong, but getting them to internalize, to think about what is right and what is wrong. Um, and therefore, uh, when they go back home and when they're a little bit older and they see that their father or their mother uh, is involved in something that is wrong, they're gonna, they're gonna take some very interesting position. And I've seen parents change because their children were confronting them with what had to be right. We see it in environment right now. A lot of work has been done in the schools mm -hmm. in trying to bring up young people who will be concerned about protecting our environment. 
uh, about using wisely our resources. And young children are now growing up with a very strong concern about, about this. And I think you can do the same thing uh, when it comes to integrity and developing strong ethics. But it has to start very that young, mm -hmm. and it's got to continue right through university so that the engineering faculty is able to help those engineers continue to build uh, and be prepared when they graduate to be able to see um, what it is that they should do uh, in order to practice their profession uh, in a way that they will be proud of themselves. You know? Good. I don't want to sound pessimistic, but is the corruption a human condition? Mm -hmm. Are we going to live with corruption until the end of the times? Yeah. Well, I think that we will always have some individuals somewhere along the way that will try to commit fraud, that will try to bribe or ask for bribe, uh, who will try to make money um, out of you know, a construction project or will want to stay in power by trying to buy their way. So greed and power uh, are very strong you know, conditions here. But I think that if you have all the forces coming together, if you have the right systems, the right institutions, if you have um, the enforcement of the laws, if the people that are entrusted, like the government, the parliament, to protect the people, to manage the public good, do so. If the industry also recognize their responsibility, civil society working with the people and in the eng engagement of people, I'm very convinced and I've seen so many examples around the world where issues have been dealt with, uh, where, for example, I've seen in Vietnam, where the uh, customs office was completely corrupt and where it was turned around within a number of months because industry, government, and the people there decided to, that they would fix this, and they did, uh, working together. So I think it, we can do tremendously well in preventing corruption, in detecting it early, so that whenever it happens, it doesn't fester and create a massive problem for so many people. There's a lot of work to do. Thank, Thank you. you very much for your time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.